Hey guys, welcome to the Newbie Real Estate Investors Podcast. I'm Joey Chan, and we have my partner here, Jonathan Boyle. And we have a very special guest for you guys today, Fatina Johnson. Welcome hey! to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on, spending the, you know, spending the day with us. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Fatina. We, we've met, you know, before this whole COVID thing happened. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I love your personality. Um, I love your hustle, you know, so that's why we, you know, decided, hey, let's get her on, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, been very successful as well. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you kind of started in real estate? Okay. Well, I previously was a banker at J.P. Morgan Chase. So I worked in a commission atmosphere. Uh, I have a invest. I have licenses. I have my Series Six, my Series Sixty Three, my life insurance license. Um, and I guess I kind of started like how a lot of people started. They just got tired of the nine to five. Got tired of the hustle. Got tired of I guess the company owners dangling a carrot in front of your face and you kind of never reach the carrot and just hustling hard and I just every year we're just like they just kept decreasing our salaries and decreasing our commissions and I used to have these conversations with my husband I said you know what it, it, it has to be something else like there needs to be something else I can't keep doing this you know struggling to make ends meet there's a lifestyle that I want to have for myself there's a lifestyle that I want to have for my family my son you know I just want more for myself and for the future generations in my family. I want more. So, you know, we talked about that and I told my husband, I learned about uh, wholesaling from a good friend of mine, Valerie. She came to my desk one day while I was working at the bank and she said, you know what? You should get started in wholesaling. And I guess everybody would probably say the same thing. Like when they first get presented with wholesaling, you're there like, what in the world is wholesaling? Like, what are you talking about? What? I could buy properties and not put money down. Get out of here with that. But um, she put me on. She was like, look, here's this guy. His name's Mark Witten. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Mark Witten. Uh, and he does a training. It was inexpensive. I think it was maybe $99. And I spoke to my husband. I said, look, you know, I think I want to do this. And he said, okay, well, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. <laughs> so... Um, we took a training. It wasn't, it was maybe like a month or so or a little over a month. And he taught us, every, taught me everything about wholesaling from A to Z. This is what's, well, not everything because you do learn from experience, but pretty much the basics. A to Z, this is what you got to do. And I, I listened to the Bigger Pockets. I listened to the Wholesaling Inc. Um, I joined a few groups here and there. And I just let all of that stuff kind of like dissolve. And my spirit was just like, I need to do something more. I need, I, it's, I need to jump. And you know how um, Wholesaling Inc., they're always ringing that bell. Ding, 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 ding. And every time they ring that bell, I was just like, I need to move. I need to move. I need to do it. I need to do it. They say take action. I'm like, look, I'm not taking action. I'm still at this nine to five. So um, I prayed on it and I said, what should, what am I supposed to do? Lord Jesus, if the conversation goes this way, I need to go. If the conversation goes this way, then I'm going to stay and continue being a banker and figure this out. And it always went the way of leave, try something different. And I quit my job cold turkey. Um, everyone was asking, where are you going? What are you going to do? Where, you know, everyone was asking. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to start a business. I'm, start, I'm getting into real estate. And nobody believed me. It was like, where are you going? You just don't want to tell us. I'm like, no, I'm going. I'm just, I'm going to fly. And I took that leap. I, I walked by faith and I took that leap. And I haven't looked back. I do, I ne my, that's my motivation. I never want to work for someone else again. So that's my motivation. When I'm tired, think about that phrase and keep it going. Keep it moving. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, you that's you definitely said a lot. That like I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I talked so much. No, 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 no. not, not, not in a negative way. In a in a good way, actually. Like one thing that you mentioned is like you know you took a leap of faith. A lot of people now like I'm not recommending that for everyone, but a lot yeah. of people don't have that confidence in themselves that they're going to make it like that. Like I, in a sense, had to take a leap of faith uh, when my ex-wife divorced me and she was the, you know, breadwinner at the time while I was like getting the real estate thing going. And, mm -hmm. you know, at, at that point, then it was like sink or swim. So, exactly. 
Yeah. And then the another thing you mentioned, again, with faith, uh, there's a good saying I like to say, uh, walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like sometimes when your back is against the wall, that's when you really realize what you are capable of. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Because mm-hmm. when you have that comfort of that paycheck coming every week, and I tried, don't get me wrong, I tried to wholesale from like, I think it was December up until May. I quit my job June 4th, so like December till May. Um, I was trying to wholesale and work my job, and it just wasn't working. But, but the reason why it wasn't working is because I was comfortable. So what I did is I put a stash away. I talked to my husband. I told him this. is like, look, I'm honey, I'm ready to move. I'm leaving my, leaving my job. My husband looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, you're bugging. Don't do it. I don't know. And I, at first I listened to him and I said, okay, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. But you just had to go. You just have to go. You have to follow your heart and follow where your passion is and decide that you can make it. You have strength that you don't even know that you have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, it's, it's funny because uh, I was a series six, 63 as well. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I did the same exact leap as you, but I went oh, into something else. I went into doing construction. Uh-huh. You know, so that's, that's funny. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got to trust yourself. Yeah. It's a small world. It, it is very small. <laughs> How did you actually, like, get started in real estate? Like, what was your first transaction like? Uh, and, you know, what was well, the result? <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, I hustled like crazy. Like it was days that I was like, this is before I got into Mojo Dialer, but I was literally sitting there diving like 150 people a day, just trying to get uh, a contract. And I was pushing and pushing. And then, you know, probably about 90 days into trying, trying, trying. And I did not have a deal. You know, I, I almost felt like I'm supposed to stop. Like, did I make a mistake? Is this not the right thing to do? And I always fall back on my faith and I always fall back on, you know, praying and all that. So I just kept realizing and also speaking with people and making connections. I just kept realizing that I have to keep going. I have to keep going. It's just one phone call away. You're one phone call away. Just keep going. And as long as you keep thinking you're one phone call away, you're never stopping. Um, And then uh, it took me about five months before I got my first deal. And it wasn't even a big check. It was, it was, I just felt accomplished because I got a deal. So I, I, um, there was a gentleman, I can't even remember his name. He had a property in a Trenton, New Jersey. And I was like, okay, so I'm not getting a contract with the seller. I'm going to JV on this thing. And so I called him, I I critiqued the deal, ARV, all that stuff, got some pictures. And then I found a buyer. And my first deal was a JV experience where someone bought the property. I brought the buyer and we got it to the finish table, to the the closing table. And I got my check. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. awesome. You know, it's something that you, you bring up a good point that, you know, when you got started, you may not have had, great uh, results at with buyer or with sellers directly, but you switched it up a little bit and were like, let me find the buyer and let me connect the two and get this check and joint venture with this other wholesaler, which is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. You got to figure it out. But wouldn't you, I mean, I, you guys been doing real estate since forever. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you just have to figure it out. And there is a way. If you keep trying, you keep speaking to people, you keep, going on great podcasts such as yours like you will find an answer you just have to keep going and and keep trying to do what you want to do Absolutely. You, you have to just like you already said you know just keep going you know keep trying um you know at some point you think like hey uh you know i'm stuck but if you just keep looking you'll find it yeah. And I think another really, um, well, something that I find valuable and maybe other people find valuable too, is just speaking to people, talking to people, getting connections, um, speaking to your buyers, knowing your buyers, know what they want, what they're looking for. And don't give them, don't give them garbage, like give them quality stuff, you know, and it's just understanding them because believe it or not, like with this whole COVID thing and the craziness that's going on, 
it's so interesting, but my buyers became my sellers. If that makes sense. Like, isn't it crazy? Like my buyer, but it, in a way, I don't know if it makes sense. But like in a way that like, usually I'm trying to find properties for them and sometimes they buy, sometimes they don't. But when people see your hustle and they understand like, look, this is a, this is a woman. She's at, she has a dream. She's doing what she has to do. Or this is a man. He has a dream. He's doing what he has to do. They're going to respect you. So when they have a property that they're so they're wholetailing, or they just have it and boom, COVID hits and whoa, I wasn't expecting this to happen to the economy, whatever. And they're now wanting to free up some cash. They're going to go to that wholesaler that's been sending them properties consistently because that's going to be the wholesaler that's going to help them sell the property that they need to unload quick. So it's always great to just have great interactions with people, be transparent, be upfront, be honest, and don't try to do anyone wrong because it's going to come back to you. So just do the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've, we've tried to do a few deals together and uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it didn't go through, but we almost, we almost. Had, right? <laughs> it was there. It was yeah. there. Yeah. But it's working out now. I mean, at the end of the day for you, like you, you're doing what you, you know, you're getting it done. So yeah. You know, I like to see people succeed. So, you know, any way that I can help, I'll be there to help anyone. You said that people will see your, you know, like your hustle and everything like that. The thing is, and I agree with you there wholeheartedly, it, it's like do so much work, God is forced to bless you. Yeah. Where like you, people see you going out to like, let's say all the meetup events or people see you messaging every single person like and you know being relentless people want to help like people want to do something for you so it's yeah. it's awesome you know like yeah it's like you know, a community exactly a community of real estate investors where we all help each other out you know and that's what it's that's what it's all about it's not this person against that person it's not buyers are always trying to take money from the wholesaler or wholesaler always trying to take money from the buyer. We just have to understand we all are reaching for the same goal. We all want to make money. My buyers want me to make money so I can continue to get them deals. And I need my buyer to continue to make money so he can continue to buy my deals. Plus the homeowners, like we're helping them get out of a situation that's, you know, causing them distress. So it's just a win-win situation from ever for everybody. And once everybody just starts working for the same team, that's when you start getting to the end goal. That's when you start getting to the finish line. That's when you don't have to worry about your properties getting stolen from you. That's when you have to worry about it because we're all on the same team. Right. Exactly. People who try to steal other people's properties, they're very short-sighted. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I agree. Absolutely. So Fatina, I got a question for you. How would you approach, let's say you're, you're doing what you actually do. Um, so for the folks that are trying to, let's say, start wholesaling and they don't have their own deal on the contract, right? How do they approach other wholesalers? Talk to them and, you know, what do you say to a wholesaler, you know, that has a deal under contract, let's say, but you do uh, have a buyer? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first of all, I have, I like to speak to people on the phone because mm -hmm. when you speak to people through text messages, it's very easy for them to not really feel your passion or to not feel who you are. So even like recently I spoke to someone, I was like, look, I, I want to speak to you over the phone so you can understand who I am, what I do and how hard, how hard I'm going to work to get this property sold for you. So I, first and foremost, I want to know that they have the contract. Cause I don't like to daisy chain. My buyers don't like it. Yeah. It just is it's sloppy. So I want to make sure you have the contracts and I want to get some photos, get everything that's needed. And I'm just going to ask, just talk to them. Just tell them I have trusted buyers, you know, they pay me separately. I don't want to dig into your profit, but I have trusted buyers that I know is going to get this to the closing table as long as it makes sense for their, you know, their strategy. As long as it makes sense for them, they will close. So that's, that's what we need. We need to get somebody that's going to close. So when you're consistently talking to someone, you know, at, they, they want to get it to the closing table too. So it's just building that rapport, having conversations, letting them know that you know what you're talking about um, and that you have buyers that's going to 
that's going to have your back and their back is just going to get it to the end, you know, they agree. And then you move forward. You said something that you charge your buyers separate, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, How do you approach your buyers to, uh, let's say, help them find the properties? You know, what's the conversation like in in that regard? Well, so interesting because like in the beginning, we always would just add the fee. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just say like, you know, someone bought me a property and it's $150,000 and then I'm going to go send it to my buyer for 175 right. and then it's going to go to one, you know, and it just goes up. And then when your buyer goes and he sees the property somewhere else, or if he goes and sees it somewhere else and he sees it for 150 then he feels like he may feel a certain way. Yeah. So I, I just, I'm just transparent. This is not my deal. This is how much this person wants to make. This is my fee. And then they negotiate the price. They leave my, my fee is just left to the side, but they negotiate the price that's going to make sense for them. And I don't have to worry about them seeing it somewhere else for another price. I don't have to worry about them thinking that I'm trying to get over or anything like that. It's just, I'm just, I, for the most part, I just try to be transparent. I tell you what it is and that's pretty, that's it. Yeah, no, it's for sure. Transparency is key in this business. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how many times where like certain things are not disclosed and then like it's it becomes an issue later. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just be honest. Very recently uh, over the weekend, I had a deal I was uh, trying to buy. And, uh, you know, so it was presented to me by a wholesaler. Uh, the only issue was that I had to keep digging for information, keep digging and digging and digging because um, I knew that I didn't, I wasn't getting all the information I needed, you know, supposedly a subject to deal, but uh, in my opinion, it really wasn't a subject to deal. It was more of a short sale. And um, I think it was just the lack of um, knowledge, I guess, by the wholesaler, right? You know, so I, I explained that to him. And I said, hey, listen, you're better off trying to help the the seller by doing a short sale instead of doing a subject to, because first of all, um, it wouldn't work as a subject to deal. There's too many bank bank fees to pay in order to take over the loan. Plus you want the assignment fees and on all kinds of fees on top. So in the end, it'd be cheaper if I was to try to buy it as cash in terms of buying in cash you know the deal didn't make sense so that's why a short sale would have been much better but wholesaler wholesaler, didn't know yeah he didn't know enough you know to to be able to sell it to you in this way so I offered to help but you know they they declined it because they felt yeah I'll find another buyer oh you (laughs) always want to accept the help because then you're kind of putting off a, a learning experience like it's and the connection because like Joey's a great buyer so you want to have him on your side you want to learn and especially if you're willing to help him why not right why not no exactly it's funny uh so, you know a good friend of mine Jack shout out if he's listening <laughs> or will be listening he we were going to start in real estate around the same time and we met at, in on bigger pockets Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he didn't, but I did. And he saw, seen the growth in those about three years or so. And now like, he's been reaching out to me with pretty much all his deals. And so far it's been, a we haven't, nothing's really stuck yet, but it seems like there's two now that could potentially stick. Like I'm seeing a house in Newark on, I think. And then I have another one uh, in Scottswood that is a potential subject too. And then I brought in another friend of mine to work on that with us, Maurice Grant. Shout out to him if he's listening. Oh, Maurice, shout out to Maurice. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you know, something happens there. If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, you know, he sees that we're helping him to get this deal done. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's, and it's a learning experience, of course. Exactly. Like that's what's so valuable. Like just learning, learning experiences. That's what, that's just the most right there. Because like the way I know certain people when they're new, oh, you're just going to steal the deal from me. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. But it's like, no, that's stupid to even think that. Like, why mm-hmm. would I, if you bring me a deal and 
you know, either A, I make like 50, 60 K or something from a flip or B, I keep it as a rental and I keep it, you know, where I'm making 12,000 a year or something. Obviously I want to keep you in my, uh, connection yeah fear of influence so that way yeah. i do more projects no deals. right i understand that you had to make changes in your business more recently uh because <laughs> of the whole covid thing so what, what are you doing now in your business because you're where before you were going to a lot of the houses you know you uh, i used to watch your videos you know doing yeah. walkthroughs and things like <laughs> all these walkthroughs yeah <laughs> Uh, well, one thing that I, I mean, I, I mean, well, I've been doing real estate for a year and a half okay. and one thing COVID did is it really put me on my behind. It really made me look at things differently and I had to take a step back and look at what I have done and decide what I'm going to do different going forward. So I had to evaluate and I had to like, kind of like reset in a way. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is I had a good, I have a good amount of buyers. I had a, I had a handful of my go-to buyers. It was like, this is the deal. This is enough. Like they didn't even do walkthroughs. It was just, I'm locking it up. I'm going to lock it up for this price. I'm going to sell it for this price. It makes sense. Yeah. Like I would lock up contracts with seller and buyer the same day. So I got spoiled and those are my guys that I always went to. And what, and when they stopped buying the way they were previously buying, I had to just look at things differently. And I had to say, wait a minute, maybe my buyer's list just isn't as strong as I thought it was. So I had to grow my, I doubled my buyer's list. I had to reach out. I had to sneak in de pe people's DMs. They don't, they don't know me, but I'm just this cute little black girl coming up in their DMs. Like, hi, my name is Fatina. I'm a wholesaler. I've been wholesaling for this long. Um, I would love to get a chance to know you. I'm always, I'm on you guys' podcast. One reason is because I like to gather up and, and learn from it. But another reason is I want to know all these buyers that you are interviewing so that I can add them to my buyers list. So I'm quick to search them on Facebook. I'm quick to just find people. Yeah. So I had to double, I doubled my buyers list. I started networking a lot, like I said, in Georgia and in Florida, because that's something that I wanted to do um, since last year, but I just never did it because I was closing, you know, three to five deals a month and I didn't have to. I didn't have to, you, I didn't have to go in and do the virtual wholesale. So it kind of got, it kind of was pushed to the back. So I, I, I connected with some successful wholesalers down there. Um, I have a gentleman down there who does construction and you know, it's funny because a dollar goes a long way in, in some areas of Georgia. So, you know, I told him, you know, uh, if you can help me get these properties, all I need you to do is go over there, do a walkthrough, take some photos, tell me what you think the repair estimate is going to be and put a lockbox on it and I'll pay you when we close, you know, and you don't even have, you don't have to give them like a lot of money, a few hundred dollars and they're, you know, they're fine. So I just connected with people and I started calling people right now. I'm working on about eight leads in Georgia and these are people that want to sell. So we're in the negotiations. Um, there's a person who has 30 acres of land and she just wants to sell it. Another person has four acres of land it's just a bunch of stuff going on in Georgia. So um, that's really what I had to do. I had to center myself again and just reset and humble myself and speak to the people that are motivated. Like I have um, some buyers that I speak to pretty often. And when I'm feeling down, because everybody has those days, you know, when you're just not feeling at, you're not at 10. Sometimes you're at 10 and you could get on a podcast and you're, like, oh, you're, you're energetic. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just don't want it. You just don't want to do it. So you have to have those people that have the same motivation as you and the same drive so that you can just pick up the phone and have a conversation, speak about what they're doing. And I had a great, I have, oh, I had some great conversations with people. Like I spoke to um, Roy before and he told me, he's like, you know what? This is the time, Fatina, it's COVID time. This is the time that you need to get yourself together and re-up re -up on the knowledge. Learn those subject twos, learn seller finance, learn it, get, get, get hit to it. 
And I said, you know what, Leroy, you're right. You know, and then I had to, I spoke to another gentleman, um, Benz, and he said, get your real estate license, go do it because you'll, you'll be very successful. So I spoke to, I just, Carla, like I, Joey, come on, Joey, Joey, Joey's on speed dial. So I'm always, <laughs> I'm always reaching out to those people that share and share the same like momentum as me so that when I'm a little bit down, they pick me up and hopefully I can be the same for them. It definitely makes sense. Cause it, uh, I find it funny. I, I always, uh, I bring this up on a couple podcasts, like whenever I'm down or anything like that, I, or, uh, you know, something bad happened. I always call Joey because <laughs> then he's like, Oh, that sucks. But that's not compared <laughs> to this. And that's something way worse. And I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. I, you know, like there's yeah, my, my issue is nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's nothing. <laughs> Joey's the man. <laughs> no but I, I, would, I always loved your energy Fatina you know um, you always every time I see you you know uh, online or in person you're always at 11 you know? <laughs> that's why I was like hey you know we gotta, we gotta get her on here you know that's so crazy because sometimes I look at my videos when I'm doing the walkthroughs and I, I'm always telling myself, these people must think I'm crazy. They must seriously think. They must think that I'm, I'm crazy here. I'm always laughing. I'm always on 10 or 11. And I don't know. I always feel to myself like they must really think I'm some crazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Oh, thank you. Um, going back a little bit. So you started uh, to do virtual wholesaling now uh, mm -hmm. because of COVID down in Florida and Georgia. You know, I, mm -hmm. see, I see you posting those deals. So. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still do. I still do work in Jersey, too. Like I have, uh, I'm working on, a, hopefully this woman sends me my contract next week, but I'm working on a single family in Union, New Jersey now. Okay. Um, and I'm 75% se sure that I already had it locked up with the buyer. So I do work in Jersey, too, but I just use this opportunity to really dive deeper in some of the things that I wanted to do and just dive deeper into some of the goals that I had for myself now. In terms of learning, right? What kind of resources are you learning from? Did you ever go to like meetups groups and stuff? Like I ha I I've been to Nick Tang's meetup before. I've been to that one a few times and I went to another, it wasn't a meetup, but it was like some training, but it ended up not being a training. It was like a sales, salesy, okay to i forgot what, what is it i forgot the name of it but i walked out of there pissed off because i didn't learn nothing i'm always speaking to investors and i spend a good amount of time on youtube any uh cast or uh audio books that or even right real books that you like <laughs> books that you, <laughs> you know, everybody's uh, doing the audible now you know so it, it's yeah like, i just are you, are you reading i just downloaded um what is it called split the difference Okay. Never split the diff I just downloaded it. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, but the podcast, I have to tell you about this one podcast. It's like one of the best podcasts. It's with these two guys, the newbie real estate investor. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like I listen to you guys, of course. I listen to Max Maxwell, Sean Terry, Popolio, Propelio. Oh, yeah. I listen yeah, I love I love the way they break down. They actually help me understand subject two and some others. I just can't think of them right now. But sometimes I'm just there skimming. The millionaire, the millionaire wholesaler. Oh, wholesaler, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a podcast and uh, YouTube videos that I listen. To. How can people find you on social media, or if they want to reach out to you and say, "Hey, look, I'm a new investor. I'm looking mm -hmm. for properties." You know, how how do they reach out to you, and how do they find you? Well, you can find me on Facebook, um, Fatina Johnson on Facebook or JBB Homes LLC is my business page. You can call me or text me 908-505-5809. And yeah, I mean, call, speak to me, call me, text me. Like I want to speak to everyone. I also want to, I'm starting to play with an idea where 
I partner up with investors, where if I have a property under contract, I've never done a flip, but it is it has been something that I've been wanting to do, where I get a property under contract and I partner up with an investor, the whole flipping process and charge them no assignment fee, and then just get paid on the back end and we split the we split a percentage where I can learn and also you know make some money at the end. Well, so I want to do that. So if that's I'd be inclined. Uh -huh. And I'm sure yeah, I, mean, I think I express interest in that um, with you. Yeah. As well. If anyone, every, anyone reach out to me, let me know your areas. I would like to know you as a buyer, but I would also like to know you as a partner and see how we could just work together and make more money. Yeah, exactly. In, in the end, that's the name of the game, right? To exactly. To make more money. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone wants financial freedom. So that's the, that's the end goal. Mm -hmm. There you go. Exactly. Pretty much what I said. I want to speak to everyone out there. I want to connect with you. If you're a college student, you want to learn about real estate, I'd love to connect with you. Um, I am looking for people that can help find me houses. So I know this is the newbie real estate investor. So if there's any newbies out there, I want to work with you. I want to know about the houses you find. I want to help you get them under contract and I want to help get them sold. So yeah, anybody out there in real estate, just reach out. Well, to that's basically it. So um, again, uh, Fatina, thank you for being on the show. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.